What's up, guys? This is your boy, DJ Tony T. It was one, of, one of the things I wanted to talk about today was programming your DJ board. Uh, there's been quite a bit of change with uh, moving from D Virtual DJ 7, which I'm showing here, to Virtual DJ 8, and so on and so forth up here till now, 2024. And actually, this is old school on Virtual DJ 7, but just wanted to show... Uh, some of the things that I had programmed in my old board from back in the day, uh, being able to change these screens here on all four tracks, uh, changing PFLs, doing all the uh, high mids and lows and things of that nature, scrolling this as well as scrolling files uh, and everything uh, in this list here. So as they say, uh, out with the old and in with the new, right? So the mappers here are uh, very much primitive, I would say, from back in the day, right? So in order to, well, that's not even what I have here. There we go. So, you know, these kinds of things were on a single line. So if you had lots of code, it would run off to the side and be really hard to see, right? As you can see, they're kind of running off to the side. So as they say, like I said, out with the old and with the new. So with Virtual DJ 2024 and all Virtual DJ 8s, uh, if you start programming your board, you really need to pay attention about uh, uh, backing up your uh, files because if you do something incorrect, you know, that could lead to an issue. So you always want to back up your old files first off. So if we go into documents here, virtual DJ, the uh, mappers for your uh, DJ board are in devices and mappers. Now you never want to change what's in devices. Devices is how these XML files tell virtual DJ what commands can be sent from your DJ board. So you never want to change this because the commands from the board to the computer, the MIDI commands, you don't ever change. The change that you make is what it does with the commands. That's done here in mappers. So, like I say, you want to back up everything. So I have backups for my mappers, right? So I have uh, the SCS mappers for 2024 for DJ, Virtual DJ 7, as well as what I'm working on now, the Pioneer DDJ SB2. So those are my backups. I also keep a backup down here on my DJ drive, which is my external uh, right here. And so I keep a backup on my external drive too, as well as on my laptop. So uh, two backups on each one. So that's four backups total. So naturally I have no issue backing up. <laughs> so if you come back up here, to mappers, these are your XML files that are generated for your mapping. It, uh, you can create new mappers. You can, you know, do a save as so, uh, so, so to speak, which is what I did here. So I made my own DJ Tony T, right? And so I edit this one. I leave the original from the manufacturer here. So now, with that said. That's how Virtual DJ stores the mapping. If I go into Virtual DJ 2024, hold on. There we go. So, if you come up here to settings, controllers, there's the uh, controller that you have connected. Now, you know, when you open up Virtual DJ 2024, it will tell you what it finds if you still have that uh, allowed. You can tell it not to show that anymore, but it will tell you what it finds. So you can come in here and find that board. And then what you do, these three things here, controls, setup, and drivers, and EQ, EC Remix, those all go to external websites. So the only thing you really need to, unless you want to read around, uh, is to go to edit mapping. Now here's where you have all of your pieces to tell Virtual DJ what you want to 
each command to do. So on the left, this is the list of commands that are actually programmed already. And these are the available keys, the available commands. So when you hit a button, one of these is activated, right? And you can define which what you want to do. It has LEDs, so you can control the LEDs as well as the commands. And also, if you have a shift button, you can control what the program does when you hit shift and a button. So, for example, Q, if I hit the Q button, which is what sends the, uh, uh, it's next to the play, or the pause play. Actually, let's not do that. Let's do the PFL, because that one's easier. So PFL does PFL naturally. All right, so we'll edit that little part out right there. So PFL will do naturally PFL, but if I do shift PFL, I have it programmed to turn on and off the video. And so I can control the video on and off feature. There's a whole bunch of things you can do here. And I'll put a link to a good video that explains the syntax for all these things. Here's something that's a little bit more complex. So if effect one is active and you press this FX one level button, which is defined again from the board, it will change the effect slider for uh, the first slider for the first effect. And then if the second effect is active, so on and so forth. So the second slider, I'm sorry, the first slider for the second effect, the first slider for the third effect, so on and so forth, right? Then I have uh, another that does all the second sliders, right? That's a good example. So you can do all these different things um, for various reasons. I tend to, uh, since we talked about it, so the Q button uh, next to the play, which is for normally for rewinding the track, I have ADD, so naturally I tend to hit things by accident, so I never want to uh, have a feature that will cut the song and go silent uh, by accident, so I have deprogrammed that and made the Q button do something completely different. Instead, I have the play button, and I'll show this here, the play pause button on the board. It says I need to hold for a thousand milliseconds, which is one second, to stop the song, which is basically the rewind function. Otherwise, it play pauses. So I'll demonstrate that real quick with a song. So if I go play the song, hit play, then I'll hold, press and hold, then it rewinds. That's the same thing as the cue, but I have to be sure that I'm doing it in order to rewind it, so I force myself to hold it for a second. I can't mess that up by accident, right? That's one of the good things about being able to program is to get rid of things that can mess you up in your DJing, because you never want to have dead air, right? So each of the buttons here on this board are programmed in a certain way. I have a shift key that changes. So each button has a shift version and a re just a regular press version. So uh, play, if I hit shift play, it'll, instead of just playing from the start, oh, I'm the wrong one. Playing from the start, press and hold, it'll do play stutter. So I can press it again and again and again, and it'll restart. show where I have that defined. Back to here, edit mapping. Make this big so you guys can see again. So, shift play, pause is play stutter. And that's the uh, 
what it does. So a cool thing down here I didn't mention earlier, uh, it will show you all of the different things you can do. And over here it will tell you what it, what it does. So let's make sure I don't forget this. So I want to make sure. Okay. So play pause, which is what the other function does. That's uh, what it does there. Play stutter. I can do other things. Um, there are some buttons that are more like the Pioneer way, and some are like the Newmark way, for example. There's a whole lot of different things. Um, and of course, there's all of these different categories. Right, so if you open up a under a different one, we'll do plugins, for example. Here are all the effect keywords. Right, so you can program any button to do one of these items, or any dial, if it makes sense, to do these items. It's very, very powerful. Good stuff. And another good thing, too, activity. So, for example, if I press a button, it actually shows what button it's pressed. So this is the command that the DJ board is sending virtual DJ, right? So there's a loop pad, another loop pad, right? I have a loop out button. It uh, actually was originally the vinyl uh, slip button. I reprogrammed it to do a loop out. I'll show that real quick. So if it's in a loop, change the panel group which is this here, right? Change the panel group and do a loop out. But of course, smart loop on. Do a loop out. And this is for all four all four decks. So if I change to a different deck, it'll it'll recognize what deck I'm on and then change the correct uh oops. Change the correct one, right? So it won't do this one if I'm hitting the button over here. It will do this one. And I have similar buttons for this. So I can demonstrate that. So it cycles through. Right? I can do hot cues as well as the user. All of these are programmed within here. It's pretty cool stuff. So there's a lots of power here. Um, would love to go into what each one of these does does but I'm not trying to keep the video f you know three hours <laughs> so there's a lot of things here that you can do pretty neat stuff uh, changing changing the rewinding and fast forwarding so that's one thing for the pads I also have that for the uh, platters right so I can uh, do the regular uh, touch wheel like normal but if I press the shift button, it turns that into a search, right? So I can do, I'm going to say no, so it's not going to change it. So I can do, or press the shift button. Pretty neat stuff. The shift volume actually t changes the sampler volume, so I can do that my bad I hit another button lots of cool stuff so if you do your research and learn it's actually not that hard programming wise uh, this this is actually scripting code it's not even really a programming language per se uh, but it does have conditions with uh, if true do this if false do this right and you, the false can be the next condition the false can be the next condition. And you see how it writes condition, not action deck one, not two, and not three. Right? So that's pretty cool. Lots of neat things. So I hope this helped. Uh, a little intro to how to program your DJ board to make it do what you want to do. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all later.